photography has always been a witness since it's been in its beginning. And the witness has continually allowed for the destruction of the potential of the human. So how can I use photography to go against the witness? With the proliferation of image making that we have right now, um, photography actually could be something that's part of a revelatory, reparative mechanism if we so chose to use it, and especially those with the wealth and power to do so. And so I think about those things a lot, and I think with this exhibition, I'm thinking a lot about those things. You know, how the witness can actually be the reparator. My name is Savannah Wood. I am the executive director of Afro Charities. And Afro Charities is a nonprofit organization that partners with the 130 year old Afro American newspapers that was founded in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, the newspaper is my family's paper. It was founded in 1892, and my family came to own the paper starting in 1897. And so since then, somebody in my family has operated and owned that newspaper. So what we're doing with, the, um, with Afro Charities is really trying to bring this archive to life. So there's more than 130 years that are documented within the collection. There's three million photographs. There's lots of letters and audio recordings and all of these other things that really document world history from a black American perspective. Um, and so we're trying to bring that to the public through preservation of the materials, through educational programs and artistic programs like this, um, this work with Catist. Um, so, you know, some artists are really particular about scholarship and want to know every single detail about how um, an image was made or where something was recorded or what are all of the details that led to this letter being written. And others are more interested in the aesthetics of what the object looks like and how the object interacts with other materials. And so I think there's just a really wide range of how people can enter the archive and enter this history and bring it into the present. So it's really kind of exciting to see just how these different brains will interpret the, the raw material that's there. We're constantly rearranging objects, looking at objects, trying to figure out what is gonna click inside of us to make us fully human beings in the way that we would desire to be human beings. And I think that archival research, collections, other people's things, dead people's things, I think help us trace a line of what a human being could be, but I think that we, at this present moment, haven't fully developed that enough. I know that there's a quest in all of our archival impulse to kind of better understand the trajectory of human beings through the objects, images, uh, textiles, textures that they collect. I remember seeing her work at the Studio Museum and just being really inspired by the way that she was playing with different objects and histories to talk about a really specific black American experience of, um, you know, that's often framed by kind of like a disconnection from history, um, from knowing your own history for, you know, reasons that are very specific to the American context of uh, racialized terror. And so it was interesting to see how she was reclaiming aspects of her own history and inventing new aspects of that as well, creating archives within the works um, that were presented at the Studio Museum all those years ago. So when we landed on um, and asking Zyberia and inviting her to do this, I was really excited about that possibility. So it's great all of this time now to see, um, to see her work inspired by the archives. And she's often engaged with archival materials, so it makes sense that she would be um, using this collection in her work. 
it's just an honor. You know what I mean? It really is a profound honor for someone to ask you to take stock of their family's history. And it's rare in the United States to have a family be that intact, especially a, a black American family who descends from slavery. In the United States, black Americans account for 14% of the population. So that means that maybe, I would imagine maybe a few thousand people have been able to sustain a family history and a family line because white people have like terrorized people out of their possessions and their homes and their land and their money and their newspapers and their salons and everything. So we did those things as a group, but we didn't get to keep those things. I come from the photographers who made works in the dark room. I used to have a small um, dark room in my studio apartment and I lived with chemicals. I work with large format cameras that are film based. You know, I try to get as close to like the beginnings of when I learned how to make photographs. So there's that. And then there's also always a conversation with sculpture because when you, when you use a body, you are thinking sculpturally. So how do you do those things as well? And then there's an art historical language that I'm always trying to work with. So there's, there's that, and then there's the witness, and then there's the cultural aspects of the whole entire affair. And then obviously, because I'm American, I'm situated in the American vernacular landscape. Sometimes I'm deeply excited about the work, and sometimes I'm deeply frustrated because I want the work to actually rupture a psyche and turn even you all into better humans. But that's not necessarily happening, and I don't know that art can do that thing. I took this project like extra seriously. I was extra aware of Savannah's family's involvement, Savannah herself, Savannah's desire to have me, an artist, interpret, think about, contemplate her family, the images, the history of the newspaper, the history of Baltimore. So it's a very like emotional project because it is the breath of especially the black American existence, which is also the breath of the American experience in general, you know, in all of its complexity. So one of my favorite images in Xiveria's new body of work um, is the one that has the Liberty ship with Harriet Tubman's name on it. And she's holding um, what appears to be a mask, but also has the shape of like a bird. Um, and so, or, I'm, or rather the character within the photograph is holding this. Um, so there's a lot of constructions that are happening within the image. Um, and I think all of the work in this series is really talking about sort of a construction of history. Um, and a construction of images and thinking about how history is made through images and through the ways that we see things. So I think that's a big part of how she's viewing her work. But I like this image so much in particular, for one, because Harriet Tubman is like a personal hero of mine. She's also a daughter of Maryland. So going back to Baltimore, Maryland, there's a deep connection there. Um, and, you know, she's known for freeing herself from slavery and going back several times to free other people from slavery, which is like taking a huge risk um, for her own personal safety, her own life, and the lives of those people who she's um, rescuing from slavery, essentially. There's also um, this boat, which is a warship made by the United States, you know? And so Harry Tubman was also a spy during the Civil War in the United States and never really got her due during her lifetime, but it's interesting to think about the United States acknowledging her in this way that's meant to be an honor in her death, but still in a time period where there are, you know, there's deep segregation in the United States, there's still deep inequality in the United States, so this sort of empty gesture by a, a world empire towards this enslaved black woman who had to, you know, there's just so many levels of, um, 
sort of hypocrisy that really exposes what America is, just in that small part of the image. And then we have this mask that Zavir, uh, that Zavira's character is holding that is a bird. And so with the bird, you're thinking of migration, you're thinking of movement. And anytime I see a ship, I'm thinking of, again, migration and movement, but also in the context of um, Black America and the Black Atlantic, thinking about slavery, thinking about you know, this movement from Africa to the United States that was um, an initial rupture. And then for this, this ship to be headed back across the Atlantic with Harriet Tubman's name on it, there's all of these poetics of, like, of return and movement that I think are really interesting and rich in that particular image. I've made probably, I don't know, 150, 200 images, um, of which we are showing 15. One of my favorite images, which is not on view, is an image, it's a fashion photograph, actually, of a woman in a bikini or in a bathing suit. I think everything about it was like, in a way, the opposite of the weight that I've been working with, which is like, you know, it was kind of carefree. It was kind of like a gorgeous shape. It was kind of beautiful hair texture. It was beautiful. You know what I mean? It's a gorgeous photograph to, to think about. And, and also it's personal to me in a way because my grandmother was a fashion model. So I think a lot about that character in relationship to my own family line. Oh, and I'm not <laughs> advocating for violence at all, but I love, there's an image um, that is in this exhibition that has a group of black men loading guns. And of course, black men in the United States carrying guns at all is always a controversial thing now, even though the United States prides itself on the right to bear arms. And I think there are probably almost as many guns as there are people in the United States. So. It's interesting to see that image, you know, because that's an image that doesn't really have the freedom inside of the country um, for that image to exist, really. There is a video in the front that's an animated work. When I can't actually make any other thing, I go to animation. Like, I can't make an image of a boulder killing someone <laughs> or rolling over a body and flattening it. But I can animate that and I can have you contemplate what that character is about or doing rigorous work. I can't actually physically have that happen in like real time, so I have to go to animation. I'm very intentional about what goes where. And it takes time to think about what characters need to come. What era am I talking about? You know, what, what landscape or not? What material or not? You know, I mean, it's a very slow, methodical way of working. Does your actor training at the Maggie Flanagan studio influence or help in any way your practice as you embody characters in your photos? I mean, <laughs> who said this? Stanislavski or somebody? Like an actor prepares, right? I think it's the cheesiest thing because it's been said so many times, but it's true. Like this film crew came prepared, right? With their light and their cameras. It's the same, it's the same. We, we prepare, and I think a, a, a good actor probably prepares and is able to emotionally respond to the preparation that they've, the conditions in which they're either entering or emotionally respond to the circumstances that they find themselves in.